I'm Christina Vanderwater and today in the resin studio I'm going to show you how I make my gorgeous Northern Lights pendant. The mica colors that I use to achieve this look is Black Onyx from Black Diamond, Blue Slate, Blue Green, and I use fluorescent green mixed with some glow in the dark powder. This one is from New Classic Resin. You can get different glow powders from all different places. I've already got my resin mixed up. I use a two-part resin for this because the mold is a solid color and with so much mica pigment going in, then UV resin isn't gonna cure very well. So I use a two-part resin for the first part of these pendants. I do like a lot of color in mine because I like them to be nice and vibrant and not so much translucent. So I do put quite a bit that I mix up, especially with the glow in the dark. You get nice bright colors if you add quite a bit of pigment. For the glow in the dark, I use only a tiny bit of the fluorescent green. It's not a mica powder, it's more of a pigment, so it's quite thick and sometimes can go lumpy if you do too much. But I do put a lot of the glow powder. I'm going to use up the rest of what's in this package because I like it nice and bright. Now, I know a lot of people will say that you shouldn't use wooden popsicle sticks because they have a lot of air in them and you'll get more bubbles. I personally have not experienced that. I do have silicone sticks, but they're actually pretty worn out right now and I need to replace them. So today I'm using wooden ones. Um, as I said, I've never actually had a problem with extra air in there. So I like a nice bright glow in the dark because I want it to show up. Now, I mixed quite a lot of resin because I have some other projects I'm doing Northern Lights on, but um, you certainly can mix less, or if you have a lot of these molds and you want to make a lot at once, uh, how much mi resin you mix is totally up to you. These do not require a lot at all, which is why I like to do them when I'm doing other projects. Okay, so for these, I start with the black. I use a tool that's sort of like this so that I only scoop up a little bit of resin at a time. I don't like to pour or you end up with too much. So I just start with black, get a little bit there, and I sort of just put it in the top part of the pendant. This is going to be our sky. okay if they're not exact because we're going to blend the colors a little bit anyway next i do the slate blue we're kind of working our way from night sky to the northern lights glowing so dark to light I don't worry about it filling the bottom yet as long as I have enough of the color to basically go from one side to the next because we're going to play around with it in a little bit here. Then I do this nice teal color. I like to leave a lot of room for the glow in the dark because that's where we're going to paint our tree silhouettes and we want them to show up. So if they have a nice bright color behind them, then they're going to work out way better. So before I add the glow in the dark green, I kind of just blend this, make sure that it comes up all the way around where the hole's going to be. And I just sort of do kind of just a little bit back and forth. Make sure the colors are a bit blended. Because it's in a mold, they're kind of all going to end up centering themselves a little bit anyway. But it looks a little more natural if you just sort of do a little bit of a blend. Don't take the black down there too far or it's going to muddle with your other colors. 
So lastly, we're going to add that lovely glow in the dark green. I don't think my scoop is big enough for what I want to do, so it's going to take me a few scoops. Just use my popsicle stick. We're going to fill the remainder at the bottom. Now, it's going to kind of go up into the teal color a bit. Make sure that it's filled at the bottom. You kind of always get this circle of an arch. It's just the shape of the mold. And now just to make it a little more blended, I take some of that green and I just lightly bring it right up to the top like that. Just kind of like the Northern Lights. Okay, so because this is a two-part resin, this now has to sit here for 24 hours before we're going to do the next layer. Okay, now that this has cured, we're going to pop these out of the mold. See the green looks more green now. It looks kind of orangish here just because the mold is pink behind there. But it's nice bright green. I'm going to pop those out. And now comes the painting part. I like to put a little dusting of stars on mine up at the top here. So there's a number of ways you can do that. Some people just flick some paint. You could put little white dots on there, use a paint pen. Um, I like to use a spray paint and just lightly touch it. And if you barely bring the pressure down, you'll get just a few little stars on there. I don't even know if you can see that on the camera. I like to do it that way. I find it looks a little more realistic than trying to do each one individually. Obviously, you don't have to put the stars on. The artistic side of this is completely up to you. You can change things up, make them how you wish. So once I have them like that, we're going to paint some trees. I just use DecoArt American Acrylics. It's my favorite brand. Um, you can use any black acrylic paint. Don't use oil paint or the next layer of resin isn't going to go on so well. Um, make sure it's an acrylic paint. And I use a tiny, tiny brush you're going to be painting the trees this isn't very big so um you need a tiny brush you can paint whatever kind of trees you like i like to do a fir tree because most of the northern lights are up north where there's more fir trees or pine trees so um let me show you how i do that this tree painting step is where the artistic freedom can come in everybody's going to have their own style or their own way for painting trees i kind of start with just the tree trunk and go down um, the space is really little on these pendants so you don't have a lot of room to get super detailed i use the paintbrush with just the black paint and kind of just come out to the side giving the impression of a pine tree there's going to be three i find three makes a nice number on these pendants but obviously you can do more and i just kind of you know Fill in, fill in those branches. So for this next part, I am using a UV resin. I am using this one, which is the uh, J Diction UV resin, the hard type. Now, this is my first time actually using this resin, so uh, I can't speak to the outcome quite yet, but I have also mixed up a tiny, tiny bit of the glow in the dark green inside the UV resin. You don't need very much at all, just a tiny little bit. I don't do too much pigment in this one because we do want it to cure properly. So just a little bit there. So once I have the paint dry from the trees, we're gonna do the doming with the UV resin on top. My torch, I'll get all the little bubbles out. Just a slight little hit of the torch there. Now I am using this tool. You could use a toothpick or whatever tool you have on hand. 
and we're gonna go in and put in some Northern Lights. So for the Northern Lights, we're gonna take our green that we've mixed up already. You're just going to take a little bit of it, a little drip, and you're going to drag that through and sort of feather blend right through the clear up into the sky. Use your artistic license here to do these however you wish. And you have some northern lights. Now we're going to cure this under the UV light. Because there is a little bit of pigment in that top coat, I usually do this for at least two minutes just to make sure that it gets cured all the way through. So because we put some color in those little northern lights first, you can see that it cures with a little bit of a divot in there. Um, you could not put the Northern Lights parts in, but really that's kind of what makes the whole piece. And from doing that, you get a little bit of divot, so it's not as smooth as you would like. So I generally will go over this again with one more top coat of clear, just to take care of that, make it a little smoother. Don't forget to get your air bubbles out. I try not to go as thick with this coat because we don't want it to come down over the edges. So I will just pour it in the middle and then spread it out to the edges. It's really easy to go over and overflow and then you gotta clean up that mess, which is always a little tricky. So I just bring it to the edges, a thinner doming coat. I don't worry about this hole because I go in with a little bit of a drill after and make sure that it's opened up. Hit that with my torch again. And give it another cure for another minute or two. But once that's cured, you can hit that hole with a little bit of a drill bit just to open it up, add your hardware, and there is your lovely Northern Lights pendant. And of course, it glows in the dark, so let's go have a look at that. And there you have it. Beautiful glow in the dark Northern Lights pendant. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I really love it when people get creative and put their own little spin on things. So let me know if you've tried this, if you tried other colors. I have also done this in a lovely purple, blues, and teal colors. It turns out just as gorgeous. So feel free to experiment. I love seeing that. Let me know what you've come up with.